The story is about one who fishes. Okay? Here's the story. Okay? A man, right? A man, a woman, can take a fish and eat for a day. But if we teach them the fish, they eat for a lifetime. Now, what's important about this story is that it's been known for a very long time. What I want us to focus on today is the Zen of the story, which I don't think any of you have thought of. And that is this. So I have to take it to a level that is next level so it spurs a discussion. The next level is this. A man eats for a day if he gets a fish. A man eats for a lifetime if you teach him to fish. But the Zen of the story is not so much the reward, which is the dopamine release, of being able to have a fish in both stories. Man gets a fish. But rather, how he achieves what he's achieving is the true achievement. So it's not the fish, but the fishing. And that's our conversation on consciousness today. What do you think? What's happening in our contemporary society? What's happening in our own lives, in our own hearts? What's important in this story? Is it the fish or is it the reward of the fishing? What's the true reward here, guys? Uh, for me, the, it's the fishing works more for the survival aspect of, his, of that person's life. Mm -hmm which then gives them the privilege to think about other things. Mm -hmm. So if they're not thinking about survival of themselves, which is eating, then they can think about shelter after that. And then they can think about love and then they can think about mm -hmm. themselves. And then it's like the self-actualization. So external rewards based on the reward of the fish. But the question is about the activity itself, not leading to other activities of joy and happiness, but the activity itself when we talk about a dopamine release, we're getting awarded for an achievement, something that we have done that the body then you know, responds to. If we learn to fish for a lifetime, then we eat every day and there's the reward. But the act itself could be seen as the achievement itself, but that's always the hardest part for people, the doing. Yeah. It, just, it depends on the perspective of the person who is doing the activity. So the the fishing might be the reward or the after the fact so it's like maybe he doesn't want to fish to learn to fish and then that's his reward he's like I got my fish for the day we're taking from the perspective of if he learns how to fish he's gotten something more but that's from the perspective of the person saying that you know what I'm saying like you're you're, you're placing emphasis on the fishing the, the fishing, fishing learning how to fish but what if the person doesn't care to learn to fish and he actually receives less dopamine from fishing? So it's like runner's high. Yeah, it's so like he's not, it, it's not a reward for him because yeah. he doesn't find joy in fishing. He's honestly just doing it so that he can survive. survive. That's, that's, that's the one option or one opinion. And then there's the other perspective where they are enjoying fishing. Yeah, for sure. So it, it's all about perspective, the person's perspective. Who's the one gauging the activity or, no, no, who's the one engaging the outcome of whatever transpired? All right. So when it comes, so I hear that story and immediately I relate it to modern life. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of, uh, it's, it's the journey, not the destination. Why? Um, I think because the end game, the end reward, is, is that the thing? Or is it the whole process of putting my backpack on, make, getting the thing on the line, and like doing this, like is that it? And I think that's what you're kind of alluding to, the, the process of it. Can the fisherman find the joy eventually in, uh, and fulfillment in his life um, with the act of fishing? And then it's like amped up even more because it's like dope, I got a fish to eat too. Uh, but I do understand where you're coming from in the mm. sense of like, mm, you know, I need to survive. I can't even think about joy or fucking fun or any any of that stuff okay. because I'm hungry yeah. and my family's hungry. The so survival. Yeah. Survival is the first thing. So Maslow, Maslow's... Maslow's pyramid of hierarchy. Right. right. Exactly. Yeah, you brought it up. I didn't want to say it. I didn't know if anyone else knew about it. But yeah, yes, it exa that's exactly me. what I was talking about. Yeah, it reminds me of that. Yeah. So I think what, like, is a little bit... You know, within the means to say is that there's an end. The end produces uh, an achievement. And it allows something to be gifted. Um, that could be the survival, and that's the reward. 
or it's the process itself, which mm. also uh, can become the reward. Uh, what's interesting is the attached states to one or the other. So are you experiencing more joy from knowing how to survive or why you're surviving? Hmm. Depends on the person. <laughs> It's we can, always we're always going to say that, though. That's, sure. the, that's right. the true answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's what it is. Um, it's just, just like there's also a third guy where it just doesn't matter. There's no, there's, it just he's just being. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's true. He's just being. So that's why I just like. It's like who are we going to be talking about? If you want me to talk about the person that's talking about survival, mm-hmm. and then and yes, he he's finding joy because he is surviving. That's his joy. Then there's a guy that is the the joy of fishing you know just the activity of it that's what but then there's also the guy that's just doing it just being it because he's, he's not even thinking about oh i'm getting joy from it. i'm just gonna do it uh it's like it's like a job i have to take the bus to get to my job but i don't think about the bus time it's just an activity to get me to the job yeah. it's just i didn't attach myself to it mm-hmm. yeah. there's no attachment to the feeling of the the fish or the fishing yeah so when the feeling gets released when the you know what we usually chase is some form of reward to whatever activity we're doing or why do it to begin with? Why do it to begin with? Um, but beyond the survival mechanism? That's why. It's like, yeah. it's um, If you are going to find joy in it, you do it. But if it's something for survival, then you have to do it in order for you to feel joy. Not necessarily because um, you can do something. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's uh, true. It depends on your outlook. Again, it depends on your outlook. Right. Yeah. So let's take the outlook then. So let's take an inner outlook and an outer outlook. Okay. So we have how we're doing what we're doing. We have why we're doing what we're doing. Mm-hmm. How is through fishing. Uh-huh. Why is to eat. Uh-huh. So we have how and why. So these are two perspectives. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, the release of dopamine, which is achievement oriented, which is rewarding for all of us. One is to actually receive the object of the work itself, which is the reward. And the other is through the process itself. The fact that you can do this will bring that reward. So actually the attached state to the outcome is secondary. It's actually the fact that you can fish. Mm. Unless the outcome is the activity itself, then you, it's like, that's a perspective thing. It's like, is the, is the goal at the end or is the goal the process? The ends to a means or the means to all ends. Okay, yes. hold on. Can we, can we, let's bring in an example. Okay. Let's take doing a headstand. Okay. So am I going to get joy because I know that I can get into a headstand and then when I do get into a headstand, you're saying that I get the same level of dopamine, dopamine hit, joy and stuff? Is that is that what we're saying? Not really explicitly talking about the dopamine. That's sort of just the hot topic on okay. today's, you know, neurotransmitter, you know, ability of realizing sort of a physical actuality to reward that you can you know, empirically see when you know people do something and what they get out of that something yeah. so that's all I'm alluding to we yeah. can go right past that because that's not you know what it's about in consciousness in consciousness what it's about is I'm in a headstand yeah. so I go into a headstand for what reason to do a headstand for vanity no the headstand that's kind of like eating the fish mm-hmm. the idea of it is not even the process of getting into the headstand what I'm saying to you is the fact that you know how to be healthy and you know how to be healthy by going into inversions and so that is actually the joy Mm. I, I got I got the example. So if you are healthy and you do a handstand, like hey I did a handstand, but if you're a paraplegic, no, no, that's a bad example. Not a paraplegic, but if you have like a broken leg and then you work through it and then get back to the handstand, yeah. you benefited more from getting to the handstand than the person that mm. just got the handstand. Okay, I get that example. Yeah, so yeah. I think that's more like what we're trying to differentiate between the two. Mm-hmm. But again, it's like it depends on the person's perspective. So if the person's healthy and he does the handstand, it's like, Sweet, I got the dopamine release. Mm. But the journey wasn't for him because he was healthy. But then the person who was injured and then did it, she didn't get the dopamine release. She probably got a bigger boost, but she was getting it along the way. Like, uh, okay, now I can get this far, now I can get this far, now I can get this far. Right. Right? So um, I guess that's the uh, differentiation between giving a fish and fishing. Mm-hmm. Is that what I mean? Fishing is like a flow state, right? Yeah. So the flow state of fishing. So if I'm in the flow state, I'm not ever doing it for the outcome. Mm-hmm. I'm never attached even to the outcome if I really enjoy what I'm doing, right? But it depends on the But outcome. you do it for the outcome. 
right? No one fishes, right, in, in the actual sense of the fish, right, if they love fishing. They score right. fish. Yeah, but again, it, well, let's keep it more on the level of consciousness of flow states. Why would you do anything but, that you would want to do? Does it always become a sport but at that case? Flow states only are achieved if the mind gets out of the way. So you have to do something repeatedly in order to like um, memorize it in your body's awareness. And then when you do it, it's like you achieve a state of no mind. Like in the beginning, learning a form, it's very difficult. I'm like, oh, did I mess up the move? But then once you've done it a thousand times, you're not even thinking about the mm-hmm. form anymore. You're just mm-hmm. flowing. It's just like the fisherman. It's just like, if you ask a fisherman this, like, do you get joy from this or do you get joy from the fish? It'll just be like, I'm just doing, I think, I'm just living my life. For sure. I think there's a differentiation between um, outcome and activity in this, this thing. Because, like, you're talking about outcome, right? But I was talking about activity, which is the flow. I get the activity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that can be translated into many different things. Uh, For example, two weeks ago, Alex is my uh, martial arts teacher. We're doing our niece together. And there was one class where he was he, he was teaching flow with form one. And I and he's like, we're not stopping until if I see a break in flow where you're going to have to keep going. And I was getting so frustrated because I couldn't, there's this one part and I would just stop because my body didn't understand that I could keep going and then move through. And then when I did that, I got it. It was beautiful. Perfect. Then I went for a run two days ago and I'm running and I'm running. And and all of a sudden I get this image about me in my flow state doing form one. And I said, ah, how do I bring that here? And so I brought that flow state that I, I, I invoked in that moment with Alex and I brought it into my present moment. And would you believe I ran faster, longer, stronger? Isn't that cool? But, but there's two differences between flow. So like there's mechanical flow, which is like your mind could have been like, oh, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. But your mind was still there. But if it's like true flow, like mental flow state, yeah, because that was still flow. You, yeah. you understand the mechanical right, flow, right? Right. But um, mental flow is like, see, there's nothing going on. Yeah. Versus like keep going, keep going, keep going. Oh, don't mess this up, don't mess this up. Mm. Oh, I yeah. achieved it. But mm-hmm. eventually, that goes away. That that sure. voice, it just it kind of goes because because the body the, kind of takes over. I think for sure because you've repeated the task over and over. Right. That the mind can let go. Yeah. yeah. That's so what's what your point saying. with that again? No, there's two different types of flow. So you're saying you can indu- you're saying that you can think your way into flow and then eventually mm. you No, no, no. There's um there's physical flow and mental flow. Like one we can see and then one we can't see. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying you're wrong in your flow. No, no, I'm trying to understand you more clearly. Um it's like Because it's, some for someone watching uh uh-huh. How do I, how do I, how can I tell that you're saying don't mess up, don't mess up, unless he can, unless can't, someone can, can never, see. So it's like we can both be sitting here, but who's really in meditation? That's why I, I can't. So I'm like, when, when you're assessing mental flow, mm. that's why I said it depends on the person, because mm. only they can tell. Mm-hmm. They'll like, they'll, they can tell about the reward system, mm-hmm. never me. Mm. I can't project. Or it's a projection, you know. Mm-hmm. So perception, projection, now we're moving. Okay. So the conversation in consciousness is now moving, it's tumbling, it's flowing. And what it's flowing into is those two states. One was mechanical, we got started, right? We're working it out. Uh, you can feel the influences and effects of the room and the space and the recording devices and each other. And then we start to move into a place where it's like you're actually listening, you're actually wanting to respond to what you're hearing, and it's starting to create a cause and effect relationship mm-hmm. rather than you know a mechanical, I'm jumping in now, or now it's my turn to respond, or I'm thinking about when it's my turn to speak or not speak, or am I being rude by jumping in and cutting them off? That doesn't matter. If it's a conversation in consciousness, that flow state, that mental flow state that occurs is being able to watch the mentality of another and yourself through the state we call awareness and be able to experience the joy of that process. That's ultimately for me what the activity is we bring it back uh, full circle now to the fish and the fishermen and the fishing. It's like one allows you to eat for a day while the other one teaches you how to eat for every day. And then there's also that state where whether you have the fish or no fish, there's happiness that abides in the process of knowing that you can survive. Even if you can't, there would still be the joy of the process of trying, 
which a lot of people don't have in today's society. They don't have those tools to be able to consciously stay conscious of their consciousness. Stay conscious of your consciousness. Consciously conscious of your consciousness. <laughs> well, once we once we bring joy into it, that's the that's an outcome. So everything you are saying is an outcome base. This story you're telling me is going to be outcome based. That's what I'm and that's why I'm telling. That's why I'm saying. What if the fisherman does not have like he's just doing it and there's no he's not having the joy. Right. So like, let's take he's the, done it associated himself yeah. with it. Let's take the survival mechanism. You make a great point. So making the survival mechanism. So if I'm if I'm trying to survive, so you give me a fish today. What well, is I, that? I'm not even. I don't care about the survival. It's, yeah, yeah. It's just. I do though. But that's like that. Then we're going back to mind. That's why it's like there's the fisherman that doesn't even think about. Let's go back to body. Fish. I need to eat, right? I need to. Eat. You come along. You're a fisherman. You see me starving, what do you do? You have extra, what do you do? You give me a fish, beautiful. Yeah. So you give me a fish. So now I can survive today. 24 hours later, we're in the exact same Mobius loop of mind. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm starving, you have fish, you have extra, you throw me another fish. Okay. So I'm surviving. In the state of survival, Let's not talk about joy because we can clearly see that this is no, not a not great right, joy. Yeah. Right because yeah. even if you get joy from handing me a fish one day, 30 days, 60 days, 100 days later, that joy is not going to be there. Why? Because it's Actually, becoming... Parents. Parents. Like, then, uh, like, sorry. What? No, go ahead. Um, like, they'll always drive joy. Well, at least some parents will drive joy. Like, you know, I, I can always ask my parents for, like, money. And they'll be like, yep, okay. Yep, okay. Yep, okay. You know, but that's that's the fish. Is there a point where is there a point where you would uh, have you ever asked for too much money? Oh, because then they wouldn't have the money to give it. Is there ever a point where they would say no to you? No, no, not if I wanted something reasonable. Let's say it's unreasonable. But then that's like, then that's like we're adding more into the equation here. It's like well then because it's not a survival thing anymore. For example, anymore. I now have. Um, uh, stray dogs or cats or even children, let's say in this particular example, one fish is no longer enough. Okay. So what I'm deriving at is just That's a your problem now. No, no, it's <laughs> total, I'm <laughs> surviving. I give I'm you surviving. Fish, and you get to choose if you want to share it with these dogs now or you keep it for yourself. Right. But for me, I'll choose I'll to give it to you. I get, I I've given you as much as I can. Yeah, totally. Exactly. If yeah. I don't have the fish, you don't get one today. Right. But so your joy is in giving me one fish, right? That's your joy. Yeah. My right? joy, My joy is in receiving one fish. Okay. But I'm only responding now. I'm only tangenting because Beach brought in the example of like money and you know parents, mm -hmm. which is going to end up in the exact same outcome because it's unreasonable. There's a claim that becomes unreasonable, which is let's say for example this whole process of surviving. You know, you said immediately. You know, it's joy. It's all joy. But it isn't. When we're surviving, it isn't joyful. Like if you see me day in day out, and it's like why can't you know I take care of myself? Why am I depending on you? What happens if you go on a vacation? What's going to happen to me? That's your problem. That's, that's my problem. problem. That's your problem. So not my problem. That's yeah, right. Unless so you have the foresight to save enough money to give you money <laughs> prior to the vacation. Right, but what is my emotional state in this place? Who's depending on yours. Are you the not the fisherman? But yours. depending on Sydney to give me the fish. What's my emotional state? Scarcity. Scarcity, right? I would even put a different word. But that's why we're not suffering. talking about the fisherman anymore. We're talking about. We're going to go back yeah, to the yeah, fisherman. Yeah. We're going to go back to the fisherman. But I'm suffering. Yeah. Okay. That's what I am. Okay. Or right? no, no suffering. Suffering can be alleviated. It's like you're like it depends on your perspective of them not giving you the money. But yeah. if you understand it, you're like, mm, oh, I gotta go have, get it from someone else, yeah, or sure. gotta go find it myself. But if, if you're in a reactive state, then it's like, oh, why don't you give me the money? Or a dependent state, then it's just like, yeah. there you go. Okay. So, so I can. I can be in a process, I can be in a level of survival where I'm not reactive and I'm not this and I'm not that, I'm just getting by. Okay. Right? But usually the case with survival and most people who don't have enough start to suffer. Eventually. You'll go on a vacation. Like you said, not my problem. You're not suffering that you go on a vacation, but I start to suffer. What about the monks? The monks so again, let's, monks. now you're bringing in two examples. First the parents, now the monks. I'll address them both. Okay. So we're, I'm suffering now. Two examples of the same topic, though. Yeah, so, okay. but I'm, I'm suffering now. Okay. So now, Sydney, you're not here. I'm suffering. So in my process of suffering, what starts to happen is, is that I wish I could fish. Okay. 
I wish I could fish, right? And upon your arriving back, right, you come back and then the same play comes, but because of your absence, now there's a new presence in me because I've suffered enough. I have realized like being without you was not so good. Mm. I was very happy with receiving my stipend of one fish. I was very happy going to mom and dad and asking money. I was very happy, you know, being the monastic, you know, with my bowl of rice. It doesn't matter. I'm just talking on a very superficial level right now. Okay. But there is a motivation that leads me to ask now to fish mm. because I didn't like where I was when you were gone. That's an assumption. That's an assumption that they would feel that. I'm assuming that in this case scenario, that if I was surviving off one fish a day and Sydney left and hypothetically had no other means of getting a fish because I have no idea how to fish, I actually went to the water with my bare hands and tried. I don't have any equipment because I have no place to put it or it was stolen, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I am suffering at but, this point. But, all right, so, so the idea is that you're being fed something and then because you're not receiving anymore, you gravitate towards wanting to learn to fish? So I'm no longer able to survive anymore. Okay. I've realized okay. without Sydney, I can't survive. Okay. So I'm actually like dying. I'm getting right. sick. Yeah. yeah. Like just yeah. like sleep deprivation. Okay. I'm not, not, things are going very bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. So Sydney comes back. His absence motivates me to learn to fish. To want to, to learn want to, to fish. Learn. All right. Check this out. To want to learn to fish. Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton. They were born to famous uh, parents with lots of money. So what do you do? You don't learn to fish. You learn to hunt for another fishing company. Right. I get to so, hunt for another Sydney. I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But in this particular really case, to. in this particular yeah. case, then we could alleviate the suffering by coming back into the pleasure state of survival, yeah. which then I would find a new Sydney when Sydney was gone. Yeah. And then when Sydney comes back, now I have two people taking care of me. Now I have two fish and now I'm playing that game, which is again, Again, this is a great example of exactly what happens. That's where it goes, you know, vangloriously wrong. But it depends on where you want to be in life, though. Absolutely. So, again, it's the person. And for know. us, what we're trying to achieve here is the, well, what the story goes with, you know, give a man a fish, he eats for a day, mm -hmm. teach a man to fish, he eats for a lifetime. This isn't teaching a person how to fish. In this story, what you're teaching a person is how to get multiple fish off people who will give you one fish. Which every day fishing. that's the hustle <laughs> yeah, but that's fishing. the hustle <laughs> that's <laughs> totally the hustle okay. it's the hustle of the fishermen or you know yeah. the, the yeah. fisher that's, people that's so exhausting and tiring <laughs> and human in the sense of um, like when I think about spirit like what's what, what is spirit saying there? Mm. Is spirit just like, oh, I'm just waiting. Like, come on. Or is spirit what like nudging? Mean spirit? spirit meaning um, like source energy or um, that, that pull that wants to evolve. That drive. notion, that drive, yeah, that yeah. That, that. Like I've never seen a cat that, although we give a cat a fish, I've never seen a cat that given a fish will not hunt a mouse. Like opportunity will come to hum like we're talking about wildcats here. Like you can give a cat a fish, he'll wait every day for that fish. I can show you a human though. But he's, so, <laughs> this is <laughs> this is the beauty. I think you know now we're accessing that point of reality where we're starting to draw major and beautiful uh, segues and tangents and uh -huh. alternate realities and and different human behaviors yeah. because that's actually it. That is fishing in a different way, a very human sense of yeah, fishing. For sure. So we have that. That's beautiful. We can return to that. As we continue through the wanting states, though, because people could just want to just collect fish, they it just motivated them to get more one fish people who are going to give them one fish. Yeah. So now let's say, for example, though, in this example, it's me. Uh, for some unfortunate reason, I was starving off one fish. It motivates me enough to realize that, you know, I myself need to fish. And I think that's where it ultimately comes to even people hearing this conversation. The ultimate goal being, I want to have this conversation in, you know, my core group or my friends or amongst my peers or amongst my contemporaries, you know, being able to talk about something without the, you know, fear states connected to is what I'm saying right or what am, what's going to come out or how's it going to happen. So in my wanting state to now fish, it's like, do I want to live without Sydney? You know, do I want to live without that one fish? You know what I mean anymore? Mm -hmm. And the answer is no, I don't want to live without that one fish. So I ask him, hey, Sydney, can I learn to fish? Same way it's like we're having this conversation. Can we, can we learn to speak? Can we talk to each other? Can we, you know, the, develop these uh, ascending variables? Mm -hmm. And uh, he says to me, yes or no. He'll say yes to me 
because he genuinely sees me suffering and in that suffering sees where he once was before he learned to fish, right? He's, if, a, so you, he's a noble man then. He's a noble person. He's what righteous. About, but what about if he loves when you grow like, yes, I got this power over Alex. <laughs> he needs me. This is another great human uh, subsect right? that does that too. I know. So we have the people the that, that fish, over. the fishermen for the one fish. That's one very, you know, that's strange how, human. Oh, that's yeah. how they're getting their fish. And then the other one is... The, the other one is the one who says no yeah. to the one who wants the fish because they love the feeling of being able to give one fish to someone. And that power that they wield over the other, the superiority. You need me. How dare you try to achieve this, this knowledge that I know. Mm. That's their get, fish, though. Like that. That's, that's their, their fish. fish. That's their yeah. yeah. That's their, yeah. yeah. It's energy. Mm. So energy. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on, it's sorry. Attached. Yeah, it's yeah, this is good, this is percolating. I, I honestly feel like the future, the new currency, is going to be energy. We, uh, you know, have you ever been around people that just, like, you feel so freaking drained after talking to them? Energy they vampires? Just, yeah. <laughs> Sucking your plasma? Basically. Life force energy, your prana, they just draw they your just prana. They draw it, you know, and... They treat you like a toilet? Yeah. They take a shit? Could be crazy. They flush, yeah, they, they feel they, good, they but yeah. they, you, you're stuck with it? Yeah. <laughs> but how do they do that? You allow them. What actions? What actions are they doing to make you feel like they're draining your energy? Well, they're maybe speaking neg- negatively. It's a vortex. You get sucked in. You don't know yourself maybe mm-hmm. as much as you can. You don't know how to stay within your own being grounded. So it's very easy to kind of like tell me more mm-hmm. and you get like sucked in a little bit. You, you know, it's a good identifier for that, like what? falling victim to that. Yeah. If you are in that situation, then you don't know yourself. Because you wouldn't have been in the situation to to have that happen to you. Because you're like, oh, this is obviously going to mess me up. And then mm-hmm. you leave. Right? But a lot of people, they stick to, they stick to like energy vampires. Mm-hmm. But because they themselves have not understood themselves enough to walk away. Exactly. Yeah. I well, think majority of people mm-hmm. are like that. They don't, sure. they don't have that self-awareness yet mm-hmm. to realize like, damn, why do I feel so crap after talking mm-hmm. to Alex? Mm-hmm. Is it me? Is it him? Like... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Well, that's where it brings us into that and that second example yeah. of the guy who deprives now teaching the fishing. Because by teaching the art to fishing, there could be a lot of deception there and manipulation. Mm-hmm. It could be like, um, it's too hard. It's too dangerous. Mm-hmm. I care about you. Mm-hmm. I actually care about you. Actuality in mm-hmm. quotations. I actually care about you. Therefore, you know, I don't need... You, sh- you actually shouldn't even want to learn to fish. Yeah. It's actually better this way. Don't worry. I'll give you one fish. I think that's minimum wage. <gasps> you sound like the government. That's it. Well, <laughs> this is where it comes down to. You know, any hierarchical <laughs> position is maintained by ensuring that the lower structure understands the upper structure, that the two work symbiotically together, mm. that the one actually enjoys okay. uh, <laughs> the downward slope of that. Uh, if, if you had... Uh, let's say you had two billion dollars. Mm-hmm. I'll pose this to both of you because I post the seniority. <laughs> <laughs> if you have two billion dollars and a homeless person comes up to you on the street, would you give them a hundred dollars? Sure. You give them a hundred dollars. I'm a homeless good person. Uh, you have two. Uh, I'm homeless. No, you have two million. Uh, hundred bucks. Will you Will you provide me with hundred? I bucks? have two million dollars right now, and I wouldn't give a hundred bucks. Right, gone. Okay. So <laughs> you would give them hundred. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So what if somebody comes up to you and was like, "I have the best business plan," but you look at it and it's like, "This is so dumb. I just need two million dollars to get it done." Would you give them the two million dollars? Because you have two, two billion. billion. You have two billion. It's two million. And I really think it's stupid. Yeah, you really think. Can I direct him to somebody that will make it better? No, he just refused. Like this is the way. <laughs> would you do it? Sure. You would give him two million dollars. Okay. Of course, because you're following your logic. Yeah. Good, good. Yes, yeah, you okay. say yes the first time. Say yes the second. Time. I would say no again. <laughs> I wanted to, yeah. but I'm like, what if it leads him For sure. to? Right. So good. No. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Yeah. What if? All right. Now, now, what if the guy's like a different guy? I have this blackjack bet. I swear it's going to work. Give me your $2 billion, I'll double your money. He wants all my money? All your money to double it. And do I get to see his plan? No, it's blackjack. Oh, it's blackjack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Okay, so no. <laughs> uh, this is the mindset of the 1%. Although we're saying <laughs> these things, it's like, you wouldn't do it, you wouldn't do it, I wouldn't do it. 
But if you have all that money, why would I give it away to people that I don't even believe understand how to use money? They're mm-hmm. not in my circle, mm-hmm. you know? So give them minimum wage. No. Give keep, them as least keep, as possible. Uh, give society, them one fish. To keep the society running. Give but them one like, fish. No, no, but like if you look at society as a business problem, right? Mm-hmm. They're deriving money off of business. Like, okay, I just need to put in a little bit mm-hmm. to make society go, mm. you know? But, nice. Right? Yeah. yeah. Nice. But they're not going to put all of it. <laughs> but they're not going to put all of it. Because all their money's gone. Yeah. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't no, do you, it. No, I think you said it wonderfully when yeah. you said that, um, why would I give them money? They don't know how to use it. Exactly. Exactly. They know how to use it. Yeah. We are learning how to use it properly. For sure. What is money? So, Energy. So then can we hate on the 1%? Not really. Ah, not really. Not but how really. many people do? Everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Well, because again, that's a conversation <laughs> in consciousness. You know what I mean? Like what you just did was you applied a, you know, a rationality uh-huh. to, uh, would you do this if this, would you do that if that, then this, then that. And, you know, by doing so, you get to a sort of understanding of acceptance of like, okay, they're playing their game, we're playing our game. Everyone's sort of trying to get by, everyone's trying to survive. The question, I think, where the resentment comes from is not whether you would make the same moves you, they would make. I'll tell you where it comes from. Okay. Uh, it comes from the people that don't know how to get out of their own situation, and then they derive a fish from protesting. Because it's like, well, that's the least I can do. I can... Oh, I went out and protested today. What'd you really do? Right, but that would just be one example. Well, what else can you do? Uh, so, for example, you can learn to fish, the, right? Be in their system. So, so, if I go to be a part of their system and they deny me, then what? Accept, I want accept. to learn to fish. It, it's you like, choose to go I choose to you, fish. You choose to I choose to be it, also invested in. I want the government, I want society to invest in me. I am ready. I have enough justified true belief to know myself, like you said at the beginning of the conversation, if you don't know yourself, Uh you know nothing. I know myself, I'm ready for this, and they don't give it to me because of my past. You said no, you said no already. No, no, I said no to someone who was just asking me for money. I never gave, I never said no to someone who was asked me about knowing themselves, not a business plan that is guaranteed to work because that person is guaranteed to learn to fish. They're willing to do the work day in, day out, 24 seven, live, you, breathe. If you know yourself, why would you need the money then? How else are you going to get up to the 1%? Exactly. So it's like the guy who's like, I swear this business plan will work. And you're like, this is pretty dumb. But it's not dumb. Let's say it's not dumb. From Could we both said yes to that guy. From your perspective, it's not dumb though. Well, well let's no, say it's not done, though. It Why, dumb. Let's say they don't invest in me because, you know, there's not enough money this year or someone else had a little bit better one, oh, okay, but mine was say, still worthy. Okay, okay, let's say you have the best foolproof business plan and you're asking me why they said no. It's because sometimes the lamb is not the lion. Sometimes the lamb the is not is. the lion. Right, but that acceptance leads me at a disadvantage and them still in the advantage and there it goes the resentment again. Yeah, but you're not really accepting it if you're resentful. If you accepted it, you'd be accepting everything. But I can't do what I need to do. I can't learn what I need to learn because they said I can't learn. So then you haven't accepted it. So that, and but also you're you're basing your life in on dependence on what they say. Them. What, you live and die by them. I don't want to eat a fish anymore. I want to learn to fish. I want to be you. A want is a. a I want. No, that's it. That's where we're at right now. I want. Yeah. That was the motivation mm-hmm. to learn to fish. That's the motivation of like we all want to have some wealth. Mm-hmm. We all want to feel what it's like to take a Saturday or a Sunday off. Okay. You know, we all want to feel what it's like to be on vacation for more than two weeks. Actually, no, not not really because. I'm just generalizing oh, okay. as a wanting state, like the want, the pursuit of it, right? Not everyone yeah. derives happiness this way. Not everyone derives their happiness. Yeah. The, the fish is a symbol. Yeah. The symbol is if I want it and I truly want it and I, I do really want it, that second party, the same as the, the predator that you know just hunts for other people who are going <laughs> to give them a fish, okay. it's the yeah. same one for the second one that says, you know what? No. Okay. But why is it why is it limiting you when someone tells you no? Because if you knew yourself and you truly wanted it, you would just I would keep it. persisting right. and doing it yourself. And I would watch you in secret and I try and figure it out. But that's what I'm saying to you. Exactly. That's what creates the 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 division because you can't say yes from a position to know whether or not you're giving that hundred bucks or you're giving that business proposal to a good thing or a bad thing. You can never make that decision. When you invest in something, you just invest. That's an acceptance, 
right? So, but, but on that end, the person sells and accepts it because they want to achieve greater. I'm talking about top bottom. You're talking bottom to top. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm talking top bottom. So I'm saying like. But that person at the top doesn't care. He's like, no, I'm just not going to. Exactly. Money. Right. You, exactly. You either. Exactly. <laughs> like, I'm not going to give you my money. Ex- but this is but <laughs> this is where it gets interesting. It's like, how do we pull ourselves out of just surviving? We do it by learning to fish. How do we learn self-defense? We do it by learning to fish, right? You can't teach true self-defense by telling someone this is the move because in real life, it never goes down that way, ever. Or, or, or accepting that a fish is just a fish because you're like, um, to get the fish or want the fish, it's like, okay, it's just fishing. Detach yourself from that whole scenario and then you're accepting it for what it is. You're observing it at, from an attached, unattached state, you know? Yeah, it's but the fisherman like, eats and you go hungry then in that state. So you, so you go hungry. And then, you so know, whatever, man. and then he has three children and you die. But how many, how many times does that play out though? That's what I'm saying. This is the eternal uh, recurrence you know, we're talking a, about. A great cultural example is this is why I like going to the Philippines because like they're suffering, but they'd still give me their shirt mm-hmm. if I asked for it. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they're like, it's in God's hands. Mm-hmm. But what is God? It's like, the acceptance. Acceptance. I can't do anything about it. Fatalism. Or, or, it's Fatalism. An, or it's an indentured state. Fatalism, nihilism, they're all the other side of the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Indentured acceptance. state, slavery. Yeah, but it's like... Slave master. Or just let it go and then all these labels go away. You yourself are free. But you're, But this is the thing that I'm saying. You yourself are free. But you are not free enough because you have a wanting state to fish. Because you have a wanting state to defend yourself. Because you want to survive. You you want to survive optimally. But a wanting state optimally. is a privilege. It's a privilege. After yeah. the survival state. It's, it's so that's exactly. like that, you can't have a wanting state if you're not surviving. That a second class in this example can deprive people. That's all we're talking about. Your guys' example is great. Like there is the truth of it. And then there is the depravity of it. There is the perversion of it. The perversion of will, which is I could teach you to fish, but if I teach you to fish, that means you're going to start taking fish away from me because yeah. you might teach someone to fish. And now I've lost my fishing spot. There's only one first place trophy. It's really what it comes down to. If because they really want, if they want it. Because you, if you, if we're talking in terms of that, it's like, it's like, you, no matter what, you're gonna compete for it. You're talking about competition, right? You're like, if I give you this, you're gonna deprive me of my ability to get whatever it is you took away from me. Later. I'll have limited resources by giving you some, right? Uh, so, in that state, if you just accept it as what it is, then you can detach yourself from that whole drama, you know? But the drama I created from the beginning, because as soon as Sydney came back, exactly. I wanted I to learn created. to fish. Who's creating? I wanted to fish. Yeah. So I yeah. want to be in the position where I don't have to be codependent anymore. I don't need to go to mommy and daddy and ask for money. Why does your person exist? My person. The one you're you're um, kind of arguing for, let's say. I don't know. The one well, you're why? describing. The one that is completely detached and... Uh, oh, I got what you're saying. Uh, why do they exist? Because then we are not looking at the totality of the situation and only in a vacuum. Because then we'd all just be agreeing upon the same thing. Whereas if I can pose a counter argument, yeah. then it's like, well, then we don't have all the answers. Or else we'd all just be like, yeah, screw the 1%. I want my fish. No, blah, I'm just blah, blah. curious because um, the, even from the last time that I spoke with you, I think uh, you like to take the position, correct me if I'm wrong. Devil's advocate. Yes, so and <laughs> yes, and um, the detached state. Because like, that's what it comes down to. All right, in a thousand years. Oh, sorry, so you but got like, so excited. what's your duty as, no as a human being? No. As a human being, no why duty. are you here the, on this planet? Well, do you do you well, have a purpose? Yeah. What's your purpose? To create. Create what? It's like the universe is created, I create. Create. I'm creating this right now. I'm creating this experience. You're feeling something. I'm creating it. So you want a feeling? No. I don't want anything. I'm just creating. It's my natural tendency. Every all right. So from the Big Bang, right, the universe was created, mm-hmm. and from that, everything else is created. But what is creating? We are creating right now. Yeah, we're creating important. this podcast. We're creating. We somebody created this. Yeah. So it's like, what is our purpose to create? Mm. Just by being, mm. not you know. Mm. Well, we're talking about suffering. Mm. So it's like, so why would you want to create suffering? That's the duality of this. The person can just be no, a no, creator. No, no, no. He might not even know he's creating suffering. So when you told me, mm. no, I won't give the business plan, you're like, all right, that's a smart move on my part. And then for me, I'm like, oh man, now I'm screwed mm. for anyway. life. 
Yeah. Right? But you did, for you, you didn't know. It's like accidental. Like, what if I, what if there's a spider web in front of my car? I'm like, oh God. I'm like, oh no, I killed mm. the whole spider. Mm-hmm. You do it just naturally. Yeah. You know? Uh, you just your creator and destroyer, which is Shiva and, and Shakti. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we are both. We are both. Yeah. So we're suffering and we're thriving. Of course, but it's who? What way do you want to look at? You can't. You right? can't thrive without the suffering. Exactly. exactly. How would you know? Light, dark, up, down, black, white, man, how, woman. How like, would you know what happiness is if you've never been sad? Exactly. You just be like neutral. So yeah. here's an interesting one. Take okay. like the take like the Batman example, right? So you know the. This because we're now on the third, uh, the second character. So the second character says no to the person who wants to learn to fish, uh-huh. and so by doing so, that person you know gets resentment. They get re- they resent that fact uh, because they were ready to fish and they they get turned down. They get denied, and let's say they exhaust their options. But because that one person said no to them, everyone says no to them because it's, yeah. let's say it's a master apprentice relationship. Again, just a consciousness of being said no when the one when the the one is ready. And of course, this activity in this particular case has to do with the fact of humanity sort of working together, bonding together. This is not something you can just learn intrinsically on your own. Hypothetically, the state is that someone has to teach you, someone has to apprentice you. So person says no, and uh, it leads to the resentment state. So now you come along, you feel good, you hand me your fish, I take it, and I smile falsely now. Mm -hmm. So the first time I'm smiling falsely, I'm receiving the fish falsely. And if we take it in, you know, in its sort of, you know, uh, more contemporary understanding, this leads to the death of the Waynes. You know, in the Batman storyline, this leads to the death of, you know, the Waynes, right? So Bruce watches his parents die from criminal activity, the very criminal activity his parents were trying to prevent from happening. They died. That's why it's such a tragedy. But in this case, if something was to happen to that fisherman, because, you know, he deprived people from eating, we would, you know, the, depending on the perspective, there would be great jubilance from that experience because, you know, he got his karma. He got his coming because he said no. Now life said no to him in some way, shape or form. That there's this, uh, that there's karma, which is sort of reactionary, but this person can't do anything because he depends on the fish. But then there's a higher level, and it was a term I learned in Greece, it was called nemesis. It means like universal justice. There's karma, which is sort of like the, the, the interplay of it. There's you know justice, and then there's universal justice. There's another thing happening at the same time. So if it's true, no, and they just, you know, it's a bad idea, then it's a true no. And there's a, you know, um, a causal connection. Mm. But if it's just out of their own ind- indignation or pragmatism, then there's nemesis starts to play itself out. And of course, this is not like hocus pocus. This is just what would naturally happen by leading to pragmatic or selfish choices in a relationship that we've created where human beings are sort of dependent on each other to learn skills and traits to build themselves up. That, you know, that the fisherman's job is to teach how to fish, not just to serve a fish every day. So you're talking about cause and effect. You, you've just summarized cause and effect. You know what the trump card is to cause and effect? Pareidolia. What's you that? taught me that. Oh, yeah, the, you told me that word. Uh, we can look at two things and derive meaning out of it. So although it's like nemesis, karma, all this stuff, it's like it's only the person that's observing it in that manner. It yeah. could have just been happening. You know, we don't actually know. Could have been happening in what way? It could, it's just playing out, right? Uh, like Leela, like a divine play? Uh, I guess, yeah. I don't know. Really. It's a divine play. Comedy, tragedy, no, 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 it's no, playing no. at the cosmic, you know, all the world's a stage. In- indifference, indifference. So you're going with indifference. Be- because of the title, yeah. So, for example, it's not indifferent because you can perceive. That's what I'm saying. Pareidolia creates perception. So now let's not talk about let's not talk about fishermen. Let's talk about your ability to create, right? Create. I'm going to take away your ability to create. You can't. you can't. Why? Because it's just there. What is just there? My if even if you killed me, the body will create some sort of disruption in the field. Right. You know, my body will change into something. They will eat and then it's like but who's the one who's attaching to the idea of BJ creating? Right. You can't have, but in this state, you wouldn't have a family. Fundamentally, you wouldn't be able to, you know, procreate. Okay. And you wouldn't be create, able to thrive. Right. And you wouldn't be able to thrive as a creator. Those are all attached outcome-based um, creations. Creations. But I'm just saying there's no attached outcome. 
creation. It's just creating. So just by being, we're creating. So in that state is where I keep saying now there's another person that's emerging, which is they don't need a fish, yeah. and they don't need to learn to fish. That's, okay. your that's what you're describing. That's, your, yeah. that's what you're describing. Yeah. Yeah. You're talking about yeah. a person who doesn't need a fish uh-huh. and has no desire to learn to fish. Mm-hmm. What we're sort of you know proposing to you guys is if I want to learn to fish, I want to learn. That word want is... I want to learn. I want to learn. I have come out of the survival state. Um, Sydney has left me. I now want to go beyond survival. I want to start procreating fish. I want to start adding fish into my life. You know, when I will it, and the will to procreate fish is through fishing. Do you know why you want this? Do I know why I want this? Do you know why you want to fish? Because I believe it's what we call it. It's, 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 a, it's a loving motivation. It's an awakening to myself, to my right. own cool. sense of self and survival. So you recognize this. I want to like, evolve. Yeah, now I, wanna... I, want, I want what he has. I want to I wanna walk down the street mm-hmm. and I want to feel abundant. Mm-hmm. I don't even need to give out fish. I just need to know that I don't depend on anyone else for my fish. Mm. Want equal suffering. So your parents don't suffer when they give you money. No. Right? They don't give you suffer. The monk doesn't suffer because there's rice given in the bowl. Uh Uh-huh. Right? But that is in itself an attached state. You don't need to suffer from every attached state. The person who receives the fish, just like the person that receives welfare, just like the person that receives a paycheck, does not need to suffer because their paycheck is high or low. Right? They got a paycheck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's what we're saying here. That's absolutely true. But okay. it's not the value, it's not the quantity. Mm-hmm. But the quality of being deprived any of these things when you want them is yeah. the problem. Because, because you, you want, want them. Because yeah. so, I am internally yeah. wanting to be more. Want is outcome. Outcome is either you get or you don't get. And the don't get is the suffering to the get. Mm-hmm. Joy and suffering. Mm-hmm. The two no, not joy actually. Happiness and suffering, because joy is, that's more of like an innate thing. Happiness is attached. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happiness is attached. I like that. It's yeah. More innate. But yeah, so want equals suffering. So if you want something, you will suffer. Because I was needing the fish, and when he left, need equaled suffering. No, need. All right, so then why don't you eat the grass? Need there was nothing else to eat. In this example, it's a village of only fish and fishermen. We're staying right to the premise. Fish is the manna of this village. There's no grass. There's no. You don't have to create new wanting states for yourself like grass. Even wanting to survive is a wanting state. Yeah. But if you so the accept, need, yeah. the need. The need to survive made you want to survive. Yeah. Then my seeing you s- optimally surviving, optimally surviving, motivated me to have the want. The fishermen mm. motivated me to, me to want the fish. The one percent that live like gods motivate the rest of us unconsciously and subconsciously to want to live like gods. But if you until you yeah. accept, until you accept where you. So you, you accept your you yeah, yeah accept yeah. your life. Accept a life of what? And this yeah. is where the great my conversation no, is. No, 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 no. My life. Just because we are, we're coming up with good characters. We have the one that doesn't need fish or doesn't want to fish. We have the one that will prey off those who fish and will just continue getting one fish. We have another one who will deny that person the one fish so they can keep giving out the fish because they enjoy giving it. Mm-hmm. If we're, and, okay. and then we have the, the other person that accepts everything and wants for nothing. That's the one who doesn't eat the fish and doesn't want to fish. Doesn't want, you said want. Yeah, there's no wanting in this state. Okay. Yeah, there's no wanting that. So we have three archetypes right now in this village fish example. But if we're talking characters, then you're going to talk like two billion people. <laughs> like two each billion. Because each person is, a, is yeah. totally Unique different yeah. and, and how they perceived the same experience. They all are this, they're all perceiving it differently. But the nature of perception is common to all of us. Perception is objective. Okay. Perception is 100% objective. Mm-hmm. Even in a coma, we cannot discern whether that person is perceiving anything. Right. It's, it boils down to attachment. That's why Buddha said attachment is the root of all suffering. Life but you can, you, is why, the root why of why all you have suffering. To be, you don't, can you want something and not be attached to it? 
when you want something and not be attached to it. Then it's not wanting. Yes. Yeah, that's like a oxymoron. That's a mean? really good answer. Can you want something without suffering? I think you can. You can. You can do it. You can do it. Uh, <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> wanting that would be a good one. No, suffering. I like wanting no, things, no, sure, but from sure. a like a, a like a natural like like sure. a creative. I, yeah, creative. like a motive. Yeah. I want to play music, and then it's coming out. You're not wanting like like I want this to be good you're just playing mm. that's a that's mm. a divine which, which right. is the fisher yeah. the fisherman that Who's just, just like, fished dead the, the whole journey the, the yeah, fishing exactly. is, yeah. his, is, is yeah. what he wants yeah, what he, he finds wants. happiness so right. I'm saying an attached wanting state where you're you're going to suffer if you don't get it exactly mm-hmm. But regardless, if I've accepted the, both outcomes, then there's no... I got the fourth character. <laughs> fourth character is the fisherman that has no outcome uh, and no attachment to not teaching the beggar. No attachment not, to not teaching. Not teaching the beggar not to life. fish. Mm. Because they themselves fish. This person wants to fish. Therefore, they teach fishing. And then therefore... This person can now become the fisherman, and actually, this person can actually become the beggar. Maybe they're tired of fishing. Maybe they're reaching the ripe old age of 60, and they just can't get on the boat anymore, and they can't do the long days. So they sit. They actually change spots (laughs) in consciousness with this person who is perhaps, let's say, 30 and younger. And now this person walks through the market every day and gives this person a fish because this person taught this person to eat. Mm -hmm. But if he was a fisherman, he would just continue fishing until his... Until his days end. Yeah, or he could just continue to fish and have no outcome whether there was less or more fish for him to eat. He's right. just happy to have another person who's learned to fish, who's doing the work the of experience. eating rather than of begging for fish. Mm. Or the other person on top of that who's just accepted the interplay of life where in a thousand years it won't matter. So that's still yeah. the first character. No, no. No need for fish, no need to learn to fish. But why? It doesn't matter. This no, person needs matter. no resource. This person is. This person is not in your commercialized ideology. But why though? It, it doesn't no, matter. No, 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 it can because that person could be like, "F the world," or the other person that I'm seeing that. Okay, is like, oh, I see what you're saying. Go. So it's a bookend. Yeah. This person is just a bookend character. But then the other one is the acceptance state. The other is indifferent. Exactly. Mm. So one yes. is indifferent. The other is accepting. Mm-hmm. Um, nihilism and acceptance mm-hmm. are the two shades of enlightenment. So we have one on the one end, and we have the other on the other one, and then we have all of these uh, characters from the one who feeds off others, the one who begs, the one who says no, and the one who just progresses the consciousness all the way through. Yes. Uh, Actually, it's 3.33. Yeah, that's okay. All right, cool. So in all these states of consciousness, we allow ourselves to experience life in its totality. So now my question is for each of you, before we know wrap up today, my question is for each of you is in your life, if you were allow yourself to have like, you know, five minutes to describe the totality, a smoke break to describe the totality, let's call it, you know, inventory, gratitude, love, consciousness, where you just check in with yourself and you say, this is why, this is why I either beg, borrow, steal, teach, learn, study, practice, work, endure, survive, persist, whatever it is that each of you do in this example of if you are given a fish, is that you? Are you a fisherman? Do you want for neither? Which are you and why? And how do you do what you do? Uh, You want the answer right now? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just like going for a smoke break. If you got it, if you're ready to light it up, if you're ready to contemplate it and, and you know, you know, chew on it, yeah. you know, like a cow chews grass, you know? Oh my. Um, well, I'd be the fourth guy. Which one, uh, which the, one was that? Accepting the interplay of life and in a thousand years it won't matter. And why do I do what I do? Because it's happening. You can only direct what I want through desire. And, but if it doesn't happen, it's like, well, in a thousand years it won't matter anyways. Mm-hmm. Okay, perfect. So now that you've said that, Are you in a metaphorical context or as an analogy, are you a fisherman right now in your life? Uh, Am I a fisherman or the one receiving the fish? Are you a fisherman? In this example, are you able to self-sustain yourself with food, shelter, and chlorine? For sure, yeah. So even though you have identified as the fourth person, you are a fisherman. 
according to those categories. Yes, yeah. sure. Okay. Also, uh, have do you receive fish? Have you ever borrowed money in Always. the last year from a parent Always. or a friend or taken yeah. someone who wants to give you something? Always. So I'm both. Awesome. So you are both. It's only yeah. the wanting to be one or the other. I just accept, like, I need money now. Exactly. Help me. Exactly. Oh, I need more money. Oh, you need a job. Oh, exactly. I need to do this. It's just life. You just lose. Have you ever been in a point in your life where someone has deprived you? Because you obviously learned this lesson from somewhere. Have you ever been in a point in your life where someone deprived you? You know, one example of how to fish. Maybe something you wanted. Of course, yes. And how did that feel? Like, you know, what was the process? Did it, is that what led to the acceptance? Uh, what led to the acceptance? No, no, not what led to it. Just, like, for example, you said yes, so there's the third, you know, check mark. How did I feel? No, just, like, what was the experience like? Uh, well, I was like, well, you're not the right one. Let's keep going. You know? Mm. Like, so back to the acceptance one, the well, natural proclivity do, to accept know? it. Yeah. If you continuously go down a path that you know is wrong, I'm not following intuition. Right. And it's like, well, if I if I complain, you're like, man, I shouldn't have spent 20 years doing that. It's like, right. You knew the whole time. I'm there. And you'd say vice versa, the exact same answer. If A, so B, you would say that you know you've also felt the same way when you know someone has deprived you something. Not a teaching or something you wanted to learn, like you wanted, but like a material just, thing? no, like hey, yeah, can I borrow some money? They oh, said no. All the time. Yeah, like come on, man. Yeah. you have the money. Right, just give me the money. But is that that you? <laughs> is that you playing with it? <laughs> no, I get actually mad. So because you, I, but it's like, I, well, I mean, at the end of the day, so if it, it is what happen. it is. Yeah, 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 yeah you're, you're not, not, you're money, not suffering because of it. No, if you don't get it, no, because no. it's their money. I was like. I was just asking, man. Yeah. You know, like, your wanting state keeps you to ask. Yeah. It gets you in a Luckily feeling enough, state. Luckily enough, it doesn't cause you to suffer. Yes, thank you. You're not that to my attached. Sister, if she's listening to this, yeah. always pays for me. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. so it's you can you can accept. You can be denied. You can be deprived. You are a human being in this constant scenario, regardless whether you're indifferent flowing, or accepting. Flowing with right, life. flowing through the states of <laughs> I have received a fish. I am a fisherman in my own term because you do teach. Yeah. Right, and you also do create. Yeah. So that's beautiful, Sydney. I would just believe that everyone can be each character in certain t parts of their lives, and, and if like uh, they will play out, like being the fisherman, they will play out being the beggar. They will be playing out mm. to be um, the one that's like wanting and you know driving for it, mm -hmm. um, and then. The higher one is to learn with the the whole accepting thing. That's what the, that's what it is. It's like once you've gone to the acceptance part, you know that you are all these characters. Mm. So like, like you, you cannot differentiate yourself with just one category. Or right. The other, you are all of these people. I starting to see now. You just made it clear. I think the third. I think this fourth character is not actually a character at all. The fourth character is the being one. able to move in between all three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there is a character that I was referring to at the bottom, which is you know no fish, no like they deny it. They're the they're indifferent. That's why I said. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. But you are not that. You are this one. But but the the only reason why you can flow through all is because you've accepted. Fully. Right, that's because that's that's you you did <laughs> have to beg for a fish. You, someone did teach you to fish, yeah. and therefore you became this one. If you if you didn't achieve all states, then can you say you've really lived? Because you've only seen one side of the coin. Mm. So we have the fish and the fisherman, which is the coin, and then we have the two that live outside the coin. One literally denies the coin itself, and the other one just accepts the coin, totally. so they can mm -hmm. move on around. Customer, sure. awesome. Exactly. Anything else? No, that's that's you. You are all those characters, yeah. and you find yourself you fit into all those characters too, or do you uh, find, see it, yourself it, more it, identify it, with one it or the other? It depends on what's happening, right? Like it depends on my perception of what's happening. Um, and uh, externally what's going on around, you know, like um, I am all those characters in different times in my life. Mm -hmm. So I can see all of that, like in different things. Like I don't care to be a web designer, mm -hmm. you know? It's so fun though. For you, right? <laughs> but for me, it's, I don't care for it. And mm -hmm. that's why I'm that first guy. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to, you know, um, just you're that first guy because someone designed you a website rather than you learn to design it. I just don't care to. Right. I don't even care to have a website. So you know technically, I mean? in this example, you'd have to make it more along the lines of. So, for example, what do you do? Like, what is your fishing? 
He's that's a teacher. That's what I was going to go to. Yeah, that's yeah, what I was yeah gonna, exactly. Yeah. Then I was going to play, uh, I'm this character too because I am a yoga teacher. Yeah. Right? So, uh, like, I am the fisherman. And then um, I am a beggar because I am the son of my parents and they take care of me. And, and like, I, I have the shelter and the survival needs that they provide me. So, it's, and then I am myself, which makes me the person that accepts that I am all these people. Right. So in this particular example, which is really interesting, is that the fact that we need, right, and we want, it's like there's an intermediary journey, which is to be, to be in the yoga would be to be in the fourth state. So I am a teacher of the fourth state. So I can accept you know, this from my parents, I can accept, you know, this is a career or a job or an opportunity, whatever, a purpose, whatever's flowing, but I've reached a state of acceptance and liberation. However, if we cannot turn away from our parents, if we cannot deprive ourselves, if we cannot be patient, fast, you know, in this particular example, uh, if there is a wanting state that emerges that wants us to, you know, have materialism or, you know, some monetary success or some sort of vainglorious fame or fortune, then it sort of negates this whole, you know, fourth state that can, you know, accept these other ones. We're still actually in these other ones yeah. and we're actually using these other ones to try and you know, leverage it up into that state where we can sort of see it from above. But we're still locked in the interplay. You know, to imagine a life without mom and dad's support would be quite difficult uh, for a lot of people. Uh, to imagine a life of true yoga would be ridiculously difficult, especially amongst yoga teachers, mm -hmm. where, you know, you need nothing, you want nothing, you are free. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be, you know, very interesting because the greatest attachment is attachment itself, so even to the teaching. So, so the difference is that the fourth one is is going through life without is is going through life uh, detached to the outcome. The th the fourth one you could see it on that level. Because that would be one living. state of it. Yeah, absolutely. They, that's why. Like yeah, all that would these, be a first step. All of these problems outcome. is because it's outcome. Because there's a fish and there's yeah. an act of how to get more fish. Or they've understood all outcomes. Accepting. That's accepting them. Yeah. Or, that's, they, that, that's, or they don't know that you, options exist to have outcomes. Then you're not. Which is the, the indifference. That's the first That's right. Guy. So in all four directions, there is a you know a, an ability to move in the direction that you wish to move to. Whether it's to the one extreme or to the other extreme through life, it doesn't end with receiving a fish or with the art of fishing. I don't get to choose. You don't get to choose. No. It just it happens and you're just playing it out because that is who you are. So what's guiding you to that fourth principle, to that fourth place? Just just being me. But I why like, do you want it? Like why do you want to be in a state of acceptance? Why not just, you know, hoard it for yourself or why not um, can, can I can I jump in? This one? Alright, so I believe the reason why the everyone in most society gravitates to one of the first three, what the fourth one has done is understand death because the first three are in a resource base and they believe that this is going to last for a while mm. you know so if you don't realize that death is imminent at all moments we could this we could die right now absolutely and if we don't understand this then we're going to live in a hoarding state mm. but you don't hoard if you're going to die because we're going to take mm -hmm. right so that's why the fourth one so i said in a thousand years we're gonna so die. there's a natural pull it's actually not a force at all it's just a natural progression it's an understanding it's an understanding all right, very cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Raji! Up, I'm very much in line with Sydney. Yeah. So, um, out of all the characters, I think I am the fisherman. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and I want to teach, and I want to yes. see everyone thrive. Mm -hmm. And so we can just build a cool society. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely be sure. a fisherman. So it's interesting for you, uh, knowing you in the capacity I know you, uh, because I would say that, you know, it's not just to fish and eat and, you know, give out a fish, but it's also to teach fishing, mm. you know, to actually show others who want to fish, to give them that opportunity, just like the investment you were going to give the, the homeless guy a mm -hmm. hundred, you give the other one. I think in the case of the probability, you would have given $2 billion if it was a world government saying, hey, we can stop all war. Would you give us $2 billion? Mm. And we'll stop this country's war, even if it wasn't your country. Yeah. Would you say yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, because that's who you are. So not off a, a black 
uh, gamble because it's not like you need four billion dollars. Right. But if it was to stop war or something, you know, anything close to Africa to help out your brother or yeah. your mother or your, you know, your father, you would. I would give it. Right. So that I think is that in itself is. Um, I, again, like Sydney gave one example, not being attached to outcome. That's one example of how to get to the fourth stage. I think yeah. the, the the state can also be reached within the fisherman state by going through this full circle. Yeah. Would you want to like talk about like the hard energy of that energy? Because you're living it. Exactly. And why I chose uh, the fisherman is because the fisherman, that fisherman understands that I don't survive. I don't exist without everyone mm-hmm. so I want to teach because I, I want to thrive which means they thrive which means we thrive because we're all in this together um, this and for me the notion of separation no longer exists because the heart um, we're all connected we as soon as we go into our heart I can connect into you you and you and myself and we can all be talking and having a conversation right here how how is that because we are of that um, same essence that created the same big bang that energy that's you know permeating everywhere oh God, yeah. yeah so it's beautiful and we can tap into that at any moment at any time and I think that's the thing that gives us that drive to these layers fight through fight through your survival fight through all of it like, wanting sake. yeah you know human being like cool you're a human being you're a human being you're a human being being now what you know let's 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 do this let's mm-hmm. understand let's know ourselves to the point of creator to the point of destroyer now what are you gonna do mm-hmm. because how much fun and this is why I do a lot of the things mm-hmm. I do I, I, even as a fisherman because I want to have fun and I want to experience I want to experience the things that I create be inspired yes mm-hmm. and to inspire mm-hmm. so can, can I throw one yeah. caveat though yeah although I said that about what I said um, there is no right and wrong because mm. without you, well, then there'd be no progression. Because mm. then I just there would just be a world of people that are like, who cares? You just, you just <laughs> say, <laughs> right? You know, I'll it, try this yeah. one. <laughs> so like, we, need, we need all types of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like the, we need each other. Yeah, yeah. And the whole inspiration thing, it's like, like, uh, like you were saying, like we were all opening our hearts up and then you know, mm-hmm. like inspiring each yeah. other. Um, and connecting and uh, the only reason why that's happening is because we all have chosen to be here at this very moment mm. Mm. it's true right? so yeah um, you chose it exactly well that's what the Buddha called Dharma and I think that's where you know I'll take on my answer to this question which is you know we have a Dharmic life the Dharmic life begins when you realize that not everything could be optimal we're just using that word optimal mm. but ultimately you could call it true or honest or real or uh, whatever motivation it is, but it's that state of, you know, the Dharma begins, the Dharmic life begins when you're aware of your Dharmic life, that you are aware you're given this certain set of circumstance and it's sufficient and it's necessary and you can go up with it and you can go down with it, you can go left with it, you can go right with it, you can go good with it, you can go bad with it. But, you know, there's this sort of understanding of free will within this deterministic or probable, uh, however it is yours, despite, you know, it being omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent in a metaphysical reality, you still have the choice choice. in order to, you know, be that probable outcome or to be that deterministic. So the Dharma begins when you become self-aware of your own, you know, self journey, your, your, your journey through this life. And then from that place, um, the usual thing that causes it to happen is the suffering. You know, it's that absence that forms the presence. It's the vacuum that forms the Space. The space was that what it was? You said it's all a vacuum, unless it's. No, we're, we'll be in a vacuum if we're all talking about the same thing. And then what's uh, what fills the vacuum? Uh, count the devil, because I'm the devil's. Advocate. Oh, they yeah. didn't have an opposite energy. Uh, no, vacuum and uh, non-vacuum. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so vacuum or non-vacuum? Just bringing it back to that because that stayed with me. I was like, wow, a vacuous state. What is a vacuous state? What is a state of absence? Like suffering. Like for that's a state of suffering because now imagine the acceptance is becoming vacuous. The acceptance is being sucked. The energy vampire. The 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 life. The reality. It's it's draining you. You're dying. Right. You're dying. So if you accept it, then it's not taking from you. But if you don't accept it, it is taking from you. It's mm-hmm. taking everything from you. It's taking your livelihood. It's taking. It's basically taking your dharma. And if your dharma is to overcome the dharma, 
right, is to overcome yourself, is to overcome this energy, then you become a warrior. And through being a warrior, you stand on your own command of love or conviction or truth through intention and attention, through right action, all sorts of, you know, practices that can be done through all sorts of traditions, be it scientific or religious, but ultimately leading a human being in, uh, through uh, their life into many lifestyles and ultimately finding that life itself is worth living because there is something to be known. And in that knowing, we find an actuality, an answer to this nature of what spurred the Dharma life to begin with, to made this awareness to begin with. That through awareness, we get to a state of acceptance and we accept it all. And like Beach said earlier, and uh, the fate of death is always there. And so to die is to know that you were alive. I, I just want to say that because you're like, life is worth living. Uh, I think the only reason why life is worth living is because you're living. You know what I mean? like, and that can only be known through being aware of your dharma, what we call dharma, which is just your life. It's not your lifestyle. It's not your hobby. It's literally every part and parcel of your life that leading to an, an, an immense exemplarship of good, bad, right, wrong, happy, sad. We are all microcosmic entities of a macrocosmic universe, like the uh, reflections of life beings of life and what is the most common way to get to that point to uh under, understand that your life is important right. that you, the the only way to do that is to know death that or this die, yeah. or have it this right. close be taken away from you exactly sure. so once you understand that death can, can happen at any moment mm. you start to value your life Appreciate it. exactly way, right. way way more than so that's the first suffering the first suffering is realizing that you're going to die Unless it doesn't become a suffering. Well, it, it originally, the it first state that would shock yeah. you, yeah. Yeah. trust me, the first it time starts. you figured that one out, you, you, we all did. We all, that first well, time. I'm, I'm telling you, like, as soon as, uh, when we were kids, I was, like, mm. obsessed. It was like, oh, I'm going to die. Yeah. Yeah, die he soon. was. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not like, was. it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to die soon. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to die. die. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. that in itself. <laughs> that, yeah. And yeah. I was the guy, I was like, but I love life. Yeah. Yeah. But see, that in itself caused you to suffer less because you suffered more while you were younger. Now, it didn't come across as what we understand as suffering. Suffering is just a word, a synonym of understanding something. Mm. And that understanding of something is that things don't appear the way that they are or the way that we want them to be. It's an illusion. Mm. So the fact that you're living and seeing this illusion of death would cause what would create suffering because it awoke you to your dharmic journey. Mm. And that is there, like I said, to be attached. It's like, well, we're not attached to death. We are eternally attached to death. Like it, death is coming. That's the one attachment you can't cut is that you are going to die. There's a it's cool, inevitable. There's a cool line in the Upanishads, which is like, as soon as you're dead, uh, you're born, you're on the train path to like death. Absolutely. Uh, what was it? Uh, uh, get busy living, get busy dying. That was Bob D uh, Dylan explaining like the quality of it. But then there was another one that said, uh, uh, dying since the day we were born. Yeah. <laughs> you know, dying since the day we were born. Yeah. Now, Sam Roberts is a beautiful rock song about that. But again, it's just dying since the day we were born. Mm -hmm. There's no road that ain't a hard load to travel on. Props to Sam so Roberts. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Be, do, be, do, be, do, be, do. Right? And that's the thing. But if we don't be, then we just do. Then we start to resent. Exactly. And we start having, you know, like a conversation that leads us to, you know, win an argument. I think what's just beautiful about all this and the beauty that sits around this table is that this is a true dialectic and that was the intention from the beginning. Conversation on consciousness was a dialectic, bringing it back to those, you know, Athenian states, you know, where we're wandering around the, you know, the olive groves in a, mm. a modern way. And the philosopher king sitting in the center <laughs> of the, you know, of the city. Yeah. So in it, the city, the city, the university, the culture, the community, the suburbs is all worth saving if there's people who are awake and alive and yes. loving. You know that was at like uh, that was at the optimal period, but in the beginning they were all beggars and like bums. <laughs> so it's like uh, you're gonna do this. Yeah. But such is life, right? Up, down, up, down. Yeah. Peaks and valleys. Yeah, for do sure. be, do be, do be, Love do. It. But it never the be never ends, and the doing never ends. Uh, and I think that's what's beautiful. So episode one, thank you everyone awesome. for coming out today thank at uh, the University of Toronto in Scarborough here. 
and uh, being a part of this beautiful conversation in consciousness. And may this dialectic continue over many more talks and articles and quotes and stories as we you know, wish Raji a safe trip. Yes. Where are you heading? Starting in St. Petersburg, going to Moscow, jumping on a train, go to Mongolia, staying with a host family, then off to China, ending in Beijing. That's a life right there. That's a, <laughs> and an that is an amazing an privileged adventure. state. And that's wow. I hope you get to share that Thank privileged you. state this with the world. This was an adventure, actually. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, for sure. totally. We'll this make sure to have this out there wherever you are. I shall. Thank yeah, even you. if Thank it's you. a silent darshan between, you know, you and someone else who speaks <laughs> a totally different language. Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> right, doobie, doobie, do. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.